please join us in the call to worship. All who are gathered here this day are welcome in the sight of the Lord. We come from times of stress and worry, needing God's healing love. Come to this place of healing and feeding. Christ bids us welcome. From the worries of our lives. Christ bids us welcome. From the things that draw us down and away. Christ bids us welcome. Let your celebration begin. Let us sing of the goodness of God. Let us join together as God's children, lifting our prayers to the one who is generous in love. Let us pray. Compassionate one, it is not easy for us to confront those deeds which do not please you. We are so busy looking for the miracles we desire, we cannot see the gift of your presence in others. We are so intent on indulging our appetites, we cannot taste that bread which gives life. We spend so much of our lives bemoaning the acts of others, we have no time to look in the mirror and see our own brokenness. Forgive us, steadfast one. Grace us with your mercy, so we might be made whole. Heal us, so we might know joy and gladness. Create new hearts within us, so that we might beat, so that they might beat as one with each other and with your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we repent, God creates in us a new heart and puts a new and right spirit within us. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Hello, my name is Dennis Rodenberg. I'm a seminarian at Warburg Theological Seminary. I'm blessed to be with you worshiping today. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of John, chapter 6, starting at verse 24. This follows John's account of Jesus walking on the water amidst the disciples. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it's my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of the Lord. So have you seen the sign? Have you seen the sign out there pointing you to this amazing Lord that we call Jesus? This sign that the people want to see from our gospel story where they are looking to say, man, he does some amazing things. What other sign is he going to do? What comes next? So have you seen the sign? Have you seen the sign in your life? We are surrounded by signs of all sorts. We're surrounded by road signs. We're surrounded by signs in front of the church that says that we are in this for good. We see all the signs around us that point us in the right direction or point us in the wrong direction, however you'd like to look at it. But the signs are always there. 
and yet there are signs yet to be seen. And here is where this crowd, this crowd that chases Jesus down, who apparently was able to escape, but they chased him down to say, show us more, give us more. What will you do next? For my next trick, someone might say, if you were a magician entertaining a, at a party. But Jesus continues to go down this road of saying, why do you still doubt? As Pastor Heather talked about last week, why do you still doubt? As Peter comes to Jesus on the water, why do you still doubt? And here Jesus says, why are you still doubting? You ate your fill of the loaves and you still want more. You still want more. And what signs will it take for you to really believe? What signs? Every time I think of this sign, as someone who has gone through this whole process of trying to, you know, maybe change my life and enter seminary and answer this call, this strange call to become a pastor of all things in today's society. Why would someone do that? It's all about the signs, is it not? For me, I have gotten used so much to identify what did it take? What was that thing after so many years of being in uh, the professional life? What was it that made me say, I want to commit my life to stand here behind a screen, reading the word of the Lord, and then making it come alive? Not my own words, but the work of God here through my voice, through my actions. What signs was I looking for? What signs would it really mean? What sign did I need to take that next step? to discern that next step and say what it was. When I struggled in my own vocation or when I struggled to discern what it meant for me as a Christian to live out that calling, whatever calling that would be, I honestly prayed for signs. I prayed for this amazing sign that would come up where some voice would come in my head and say, what are you doing? Take your cross and follow me. Take your cross and follow me. I have given you these gifts. Why are you not pursuing it? Why are you struggling with various ailments? Or why are you struggling with all of this? Can you not see it? That clear and definitive sign that would say, I got it. I know it for sure. But God doesn't work like that. God doesn't work like that. Yes, my building up and those many signs I wanted to see. They were all signs. They were still signs. I just didn't know it. I didn't know that all of the experience that I would build up in my professional life or my family life or my community life, the life I had with my friends, my family, that those were all signs of what it means not to be someone that wants to become a pastor. No, but signs of what it means to follow Christ. To follow Christ and receive that bread of life that comes from Christ. As it did 2,000 years ago, it is still here. It's here for me, and it's here for you, this bread of life. The many signs that are all around us, the signs that come through here. We don't need it. It is Moses who we assume. Moses is the one who gives, gives the Israelites the manna. Jesus says, not so fast, my friends. Well, Moses is the leader. It is God who provides all to Moses and to your ancestors. It is God who works in and amongst you. God who works in and amongst me. Whatever that may be, however many meandering paths that may take, God is there. Believe in him whom God has sent. Believe in this Jesus the Christ. Believe in the bread of life. And to trust that we have been given all. We have been given a great gift. We have been given all of this. We will not be thirsty. We will not be hungry. We have been given abundantly. We have been given that even when it feels that we are scarce in this world, we are still rich. 
we are still wealthy. We have received that bread. Now, I think of this all the time that my eyes have been opened each day. One of the reasons we come together and we engage with one another, whether it be in person or whether it be in scripture or listening to someone on a screen, it is what does it mean to have our eyes opened? And I can't help but think 30 years ago, almost now, 30 years ago, my favorite band, and I'll admit this, is going to be kind of a cultural weird reference, was Ace of Bass. This weird Swedish group, ABBA version 2.0, for those of you 70s fans. But they had the sign called, they had the song called The Sign. And in it, it's a basic, the hook gets you. I saw the sign and it opened up my eyes. Talking about moving through this pathway. And so, may I ask you that you may open up your eyes, that you see the sign in your own life, in the big things and in the small things. Because in all of that, God is opening up your eyes. God is giving you that sign. Even when you don't think that's what you want to hear, God is still there with you. May you forever, forever find yourselves fed and the presence of the bread of life with you always, now and forever. Amen. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite you into a moment of prayer as we pray for the whole world and those prayers yet unheard by God. May we trust in the listening ear of God as we pray in heart, in mind, and in voice. Let us pray. We ask for your protection for those in this hot summer that they may find healing and protection from the heat that is outside, whether it be in their home or on the streets. We ask that you bless those in power, those who have been elected power or handed power, that they may care especially for the least of these amongst, amongst our midst. Give them a wise and discerning ear and a caretaking heart. We ask for the protection of your wonderful and beautiful creation. May we be blessed to care for the soil, the flowers, the plants, the trees, the waterways around us that give us life. We ask for your healing presence among those that we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts now. May you be with them through whatever pains and ills they may have. We ask for those especially that are in their final days, that they may find comfort and peace. We ask for those wishing and waiting for the birth of children. We especially ask for those that grieve for those who have joined the heavenly hosts. United as a family of faith and as a body of Christ, we lift up these prayers to you, O God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. We now join together praying the prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for our present abundance and for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this community. We thank you for our faith, for our knowledge of you, and for the assurance of your love. May all these gifts be a blessing to those in need. Amen. Receive the closing benediction. God commissions you to now go forth knowing that God in fact resides among us, reaching toward us in love. May you serve others in the gladness God has given you. Hold fast to what is good, honor all people, loving and serving God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.